Hey, hello. Um, wanted to give you guys some updates on what the heck it's like over here on this side of the world. Um, also thinking about going live every uh, night this week here, which is morning for you guys back in Colorado in the U.S. Um, and I thought this could just be a cool way for us to kind of exchange information on what's going on in our cities and how we're adjusting to the quarantine, self-isolation, COVID-19 2020 lockdown. So um, I've invited one of my friends here in uh, Philippines to join to also share his experience on uh, what he's doing. It looks like he just joined. So um, anyway, yeah. Let's see, I got here in Philippines about one day before lockdown. And um, hey, hey, what's going on? Adjo, how you doing, man? Hey guys, welcome. Just talking about uh, what lockdown is like here in the Philippines. I got here a little bit over one month ago, and um, it's been it, it was basically enhanced community quarantine within 48 hours of me arriving here. Um, in fact, my travel insurance told me that the CDC announced level three like while I was in the air because I departed U.S. on March 10th and arrived here on March 12th. So um, anyway, that's that's what it's been like. So let me let me see if my friend Angel here can join. By the way, Angel, I think you have to you have to find somewhere to click to uh, request to join. Just message me if that's not working. And um, yeah, so um, it started out kind of casual here, and it's been. A pretty easy month until the last few days it's gotten a little bit more annoying so uh, yeah thanks Adam glad 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 you're doing well being bored um, you know everything shut down pretty fast like as soon as I got here I was able to enjoy Korean barbecue I went to a restaurant uh, eating Korean barbecue in the Philippines is one of my favorite things to do and um, I was able to get it right before lockdown um, I was able to order a Zinya, which is an app where you can just order a massage for about $8 and they'll come to your house and give you a massage. No, not happy time. This is not Thailand. And, um, and I did get a haircut. I also got a haircut like uh, a few days, I think two days before lockdown. I got it right after I got here. So um, I'm thankful for those three things and I miss all three of those things dearly. I wish I could have Korean barbecue. Wish I could have a haircut and wish I could have a massage right about now. Billy, what's going on? Let's see, we've got people from New Mexico, from Colorado. We've got people from Philippines. How are you guys doing? So, um, Angel, I would love to hear how the uh, quarantine is going for you here. Let me see if I can invite you. Um, invite friends to watch. Oh, gosh, I don't know. Search? Yeah, let's see. Angel? Angel? And if anyone else wants to join and tell us about how the lockdown is going, that would be great. All right, here, I think I can invite Angel. And um, so I sent the invite. Let's see if he's able to join. But um, yeah, basically everything's closed at this point. Lockdown started out where it was, um, all the bars were closed, you know, all the restaurants were closed. Um, all that stuff was closed right away. And then everything started to shut down. Like even the hardware store is shut down. Like Angel here, who's hopefully going to join, he was able to order a PS4. And I was able to order a monitor from uh, Amazon, but now you can't even get that because they're only delivering basic goods. They shut down all the uh, public transportation, so we have what's called Grab here, and uh, that's like the Uber here in Philippines. And um, that's shut down, so there's no public transportation. Uh, luckily, I'm here in a very walkable, safe part of Manila, Philippines. It's called uh, BGC here in Tagig City. And... Uh, it's it's uh it's just fine. I'm I'm very comfortable. I wish it was daytime. I could show you guys the view. Um, so yeah, how's how's it going for you guys? Um, Keegan, how how are you doing with lockdown? Billy, what's New Mexico like? Why don't you guys let me know how it's going there? Angel can't figure out how to join. He says, see, he's he's here watching. He's just. He's not quite on yet, but um, Angel is a friend I met through um, kind of the online entrepreneurs group of friends I have out here. Um, out here in the Philippines, there's a lot of entrepreneurs. There's a lot of CEOs that have um, outsourced staff, and they have a lot of Filipinos working for them out here. And that is uh, basically the core of my group of friends, and that's where I met Angel. He's staying, uh, what, Angel, about a 15-minute walk north of here, and, um, you know, we were... 
we were going for walks. I would go for walks with my friend Joe, the CEO of Empire Flippers. Angel and I would go for walks. Um, out of boredom, we were actually able to film some content. Um, with, my, with my extra time at home, I'm working on making a type of music video um, about handshaking and how awful it is that now it's not allowed. You're not allowed to handshake anymore. It's the worst thing you could ever do. I hold the world record for something that might get you infected. Um, and that's one of the lyrics in the song that this guy helped me create. So we were filming some content for a, a music video, but now, as of like uh, two days ago, they got really strict and they won't let you even walk outside without, without having a quarantine pass. That's right, so there in the US, you think it's bad because places are closed. You can't have gatherings of 10 or more people. Well, now we can't go outside unless we have a quarantine pass. And um, I don't have a big family here in this unit, but of the big families, they're giving out passes where it's only one per family. So houses of like 10 people will only have one quarantine pass where one person can leave to get the groceries. And um, of course, they're taking it very seriously. People are, are um, okay following the instructions for the most part. Although I think we're all getting pretty... Uh, Board sitting at home. That's why I'm on Facebook Live talking to you guys. It's there's not much else to do, but <laughs> anyway. So so let's see who else is here. Let's see. Adam says I need the IDs. He's in Makati right now. So one of my one of my friends is over in Makati right now. Let's see. Keegan, who's located in Denver, says there's a few inches of snow. Most packages delayed, and. Uh, Waits to get in the grocery store while standing six feet apart. Yeah, that's here too. Luckily, I can see the line of the grocery store from my window right here. So I can see if the line's looking long or if it's looking very freaking long. So, um, hey, Joe, what's going on? Hey, do you want to come on and tell us what the heck quarantine like is here in Philippines? Like, how's it been going for you? Joe's, Joe is one of my friends here in to Geek City here in BGC as well. He lives, um, what, a three minute walk away? We'll see if he, we can get him to come on. Angel's trying to come on still, but he can't figure it out, guys. It's his first time trying to join Facebook Live. All right, Billy from New Mexico. What's up, bro? Billy says, I'm just sitting at home waiting for service calls to come in, and now it's snowing in Santa Fe too. Angel says, send the request again. Sorry, man, I tried to, it said already sent. So, um, Angel, if you're viewing this from your phone, I'm not quite sure where it is, but I bet if you view it from your phone, you can find it. Joseph William McNaughty says he's not camera ready. All right, next time, Joe. Um, Anthony, hello from Florida. How's it going over there? So, hey, Billy, I have a question for you. So, Billy is one of my friends from New Mexico, and he is a, uh, he's got a booming plumbing business, and uh, he says he's waiting for service calls to come in. It's Monday morning over in New Mexico. And um, what's it like, Billy? When you go to people's houses, do you have to wear like a mask or have you been, has the government told you you need to do anything? What about social distancing when a plumber or, or like one of your, when your staff members go, have you guys had to train your, your expert plumbers to go about things a different way considering social distancing and uh, stuff like that, Billy? I'm really interested in how other people's businesses are affected by this. Um, Anthony, thank you very much. Feeling safe out here, just a little bit bored. How's Florida? You're up, you're up, uh, let's see, it's 10.30 a.m. in Florida right now, I think. What's it like over there, Anthony? Anthony helped me edit some videos in the past with the Handshake and Video Series, and um, I, I hope he's doing okay, because you know, video editing, that's a job that you might need a, a big monitor and powerful computer for with that, but hopefully you can do it from home and everything's going well for you, Anthony. So uh, let's see, we've got a couple comments coming in. Billy, yes, we have to wear masks and protective gloves and booties on our shoes. So yeah, that's, I think that's, uh, maybe the masks and gloves are new, but I, I, know, I know you guys, your staff would all, already wear booties, Billy, because you guys do such a good job of, uh, of um, cleaning the customer's home. There's nothing worse than when a plumber comes to your house and fixes the problem, but makes a mess. And um, Billy's Plumbing Business in New Mexico has always been good about their, their plumbers coming with uh, booties, like a little thing for the shoe. Let's see. Um, hi, Matt. Good evening. Stay safe. Thank you. You too. Anthony has also been live streaming for clients, and he wears masks 
glasses, etc. Man, I don't, I don't have my glasses here, but you know, it, it kind of sounds like you're wearing masks on the live stream, Anthony. In fact, uh, oh, let's see. Anthony says I have to push clients away from me because they want to shake my hands or get close to me. <laughs> you're lucky I'm not your client right now, buddy. Um, people forget sometimes, and I have to say, please keep a safe distance. Anthony, it's okay to shake hands. Just make sure you can see a sink. That way you can wash your hands right away. Yeah, virtual conferences. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Hey, question. Um, question. Um, why is everyone talking about handshakes? Like, why are people talking about hugs? You know, I, I feel like I'd catch... COVID-19 from a hug instead of a handshake. Dr. Fauci, is that how you pronounce it? Dr. Fauci, Trump's advisor. Have you guys been seeing those articles? Uh, let's see, Adam. Philippines has the highest number of cases and the highest number of deaths in Southeast Asia, by the way. Well, dang, that's too bad because I was feeling safe until you said that. Now I feel like I need to wear a face mask even talking to you on Facebook Live, Agio. All right, Anthony says no hugs either. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Maybe people could start posting about how hugs are dangerous. You know, everyone says, this is the end of the handshake. Well, what about hugs? What about the Latino beso? You know, coming from New Mexico, you give someone a hug, a little, little kiss on the cheek, huh? There's definitely some stuff getting airborne and I and droplets and I think that's dangerous too. Let's see, Anthony, I'm overly protective just because I don't want to bring anything home to the kids. Thanks for chatting, Matt. Good to see you. You're doing well. Hey, thanks for joining, Anthony. We'll catch you every single night and morning that I'm going live here out of boredom. But yeah, totally to Anthony's point, like, you know, it would suck to catch it and, uh, but it sucks even more if you, if you know you're gonna bring it home to someone, you know? I was, uh, I was out here in Philippines and kind of worried, what if, what if some family back home catches it? Should I go back home to see them? And um, I made the decision that uh, although I'd be ready to go home in an instant, it's also kind of dangerous. If I were to go to multiple airports, I'd have to get back to Denver, buy a car, because I sold my car, drive down to New Mexico where my family is and, and hope that I didn't see them. You know, when everyone kind of scrambled, when everywhere in the world was starting to lock down, I think a lot of it was passed at that time because people weren't quarantining, where now people are getting a little bit more serious about quarantine. One thing I also don't know is, what if I, what if I flew to Los Angeles right now? Would I have to quarantine there for 14 days or could I continue to Denver? How does that work, you know? How about you guys? When was the last time you traveled somewhere? When was the last time you had a handshake? Is everyone over a month? I haven't taken a flight in over a month. <sighs> so, what else? What else? What are you guys doing to stay busy on this self isolation game? Um, who, let's see. Who else, who else wants to be here? I'm going to start inviting some of you guys. I'm going to invite Miggy. Uh, who else? Keegan. There we go. Yeah. Dave Glazer. Are you watching, Dave? Who else is watching? I don't think I can see who's watching here. But anyway, I see a Char is watching. Hello, Charizard. Do you want to join and tell us how things are going here? Um, what are the signs and symptoms of the handshake withdrawal, Keegan says. Um, Keegan, join the call. Just do it, Okay. Um, the signs of a handshake withdrawal are, um, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know, but I definitely, Hey, good morning. Good morning. Um, the signs of handshake withdrawal are when you get bored and start going on Facebook live or when you start trying to do weird stuff that you've never done before, like, uh, make a music video. I don't know. You want to delete your Google alerts? You guys, I have a Google alert for handshaking in case my tiny company were to ever be in the news. And um, <laughs> all the alerts are about Dr. Fauci saying, the handshake is dead. We're never going to handshake again. And that's just fine. Like, 
people call me handshake and homes, but we can make it huggable homes. And I'm just going to go in for the hug each time um, after the pandemic. So um, hello, Anna Renee, another friend from Denver. Um, how's it going? Tell me more about what quarantine is like for you guys. Did who, who hoarded all the toilet paper? Which one of you? Can you guys please tell me? Because everyone's been pretty pissed at you. And um, you're not allowed to do that. Speaking of hoarding, you know, one of my uh, past clients actually has a, uh, a law firm. And he's been getting a ton of inquiries from people who want to start class action lawsuits for companies that are price gouging, right? Because it's not cool if you buy the hand sanitizer and then you hoard it and sell it for $15 for a little bottle like this, right? Speaking of. Okay, Billy. Billy, you want to join? Let's do it. Working really hard not to lose my shit. The no contact stuff is kill is killing me. Yeah, is it, is it weird? Like when you walk into someone's house to check out their their plumbing, like you can't shake their hand. What? So what do you do? Do you give them a a Japanese bow? Do Do you give them the elbow bump? I've been noticing some people give me the air elbow bump, which I'm cool with. Because if you're gonna do something as weird as an elbow bump, like I'm just going to leave your elbow there hanging and not, not mess with it. So, uh, let's see, Billy, I'm going to see if I can find your name. Billy, Billy Elright. All right. Join us, Billy. Maybe, maybe Billy's going to join us and see how it's going from, uh, from New Mexico. Keegan Hayes has another strong question. How is Sean Paul doing, doing during these trying times? Um, well, he's great. The last time we heard from Sean Paul, uh, he said it's going to be epic when this is over and that we can all go back to shaking hands. So he looked good. Um, I wonder how Jamaica is doing. I should have asked, you know, Sean Paul, how, how it's going in Jamaica. A lot of these small countries, I'm really interested in what the true statistics are, right? Like I saw, I saw a piece of data online and it said Vietnam had zero deaths. Hmm. Maybe, maybe they have zero deaths or maybe not. But um, I mean, the, the confusing thing with, with COVID-19 is you definitely know how many deaths, deaths there's been, but you're not always sure how many cases there are, right? Like I've had, I had one friend in Denver who caught it, who caught the coronavirus. And um, she said that she was not officially tested because there's limited test kits, right? So what does that mean? That means that the death rate is probably going to be a little bit higher than it really is, right? Because if we have, if we have, um, let's say, nine hundred cases and nine deaths, then the death rate would be one percent. But there might be another hundred cases that people never went to the hospital for or were never tested. So that might mean the death rate is lower. So um, I thought that was kind of interesting. That was something brought up by a. A doctor I, I heard from recently um, yeah what else what else do you guys know anyone who's been infected with the coronavirus I, I know a, a few people actually I've seen some pretty terrible stuff man pretty terrible stuff like it sucks if you get sick you know people in our age group are uh, Hopefully okay, but there's people in their 20s and 30s that are really getting their asses kicked with this, with this uh, disease and this virus. And um, and man, it's awful if your friends or family get it too. You know. Billy says, "Yeah, my sister and her family. Wow, that's terrifying." I invited you, if Billy, if you wanna if you wanna join, I invited you to come on if you wanna tell us anything about the the lockdown over in New Mexico. Yo, what's going on, Mr. Banner Signs and Graphics? How? Oh no, oh no, Banner Signs and Graphics. How is your business doing, bro? Kind of worried about you. You probably have people working from home. Um, J. Ivan Hernandez, you can see there, just joined, and um, he took over the role of a CEO of a sign company, and um, I mean, maybe they had a dozen or almost two dozen employees in an office in, in Denver. And um, man, I'd like to hear how it's going for, for you, bro. I'm a little bit worried about you. But um, yeah, man, I bet you guys are using a lot of Zoom right now. Yeah. All right, Angel. 
Yep. <laughs> it's okay. Um, can you request? Still seeing. There's a couple people trying to join who are not able to. I wonder if there's a way I can... Wait, let's see. I can put on some masks for you guys. Um, I've invited some people to join. It doesn't seem like it's working very well. I can write a comment. Um, what, what else? I don't know. I guess for some reason it's not letting anyone join. Um, J.D. Stafford. How you doing, man? Good to see you here. I hope you're doing okay, bro. Um, who else? Andrew Turner. Is that a past handshake and guest I see right there? Is that an individual in the recruiting industry? What's the recruiting industry like, Andrew? I bet that's a pretty interesting space right now. A lot of people are suddenly out of work. Um, I guess are, are a lot of companies hiring right now? I don't think, uh, maybe some companies like Zoom might be hiring. A lot of companies are not hiring right now though. You know, it's a tough time to lose your job, I would imagine. But it's a great time to learn about how to make money online. So, um, no, I, I'm not pitching you on anything. Sorry, guys. But, um, but I do have an online business with uh, about seven people working here. And we are a fully remote company. You know, does anyone remember that co-working space we had at Handshaken called the Handshaken Headquarters? I had that office space for three years. And last year, I almost renewed my lease at a higher rate three-year personal guarantee and chose, I'm not gonna renew it. I've been traveling too much. Um, you know, I'm making more money from online than from real estate nowadays. So um, I think I got pretty lucky not re renewing that office lease. All right, we've got a couple comments. Yes, a lot of Zoom and luckily a few larger clients keeping us alive so far. Good, man, good. Glad to hear that. Um, Let's see, Billy, all it does is bring me back to your live stream when I go to the invite. Maybe that's the same thing that's happening to Angel. Unbelievable, Facebook. Fix your tech. Robin Christie, also from New Mexico. How you doing? And Giselle Montano, another another friend from New Mexico. Well, we got a lot of people in here, guys. It's, last time I only had one person. It was my mom. I asked her to watch. Um... <laughs> All right, what else, what else have I got for you guys? So anyway, I'm thinking about doing this um, every, every morning this week just to kind of talk with my people and see you guys and, and uh, also share what's going on here in the Philippines. For those of you guys new to the call, you know, I was just kind of talking about what quarantine and lockdown is like here in the Philippines. It's been, it's been an easy month. Uh, actually, it's now been over one month that we've been on lockdown. And... Um, yeah, it's it's it hasn't been that bad. I got fast Wi-Fi. I'm in a great part of town. I feel very safe, very comfortable. I'm getting food on delivery every night. There is some there's some meal plans that we're delivering my meals each day. I tried that for a while. Grocery stores right across the street. So um, eating a lot of food. Who else is eating a lot of food? I know you are. So um, yeah, pretty happy about the location. I was able to like walk around and go for long walks. Literally, some days I would just walk all day. I had like work a little bit in the late morning, stroll all around this part of town, go walk to the checkpoints. We have checkpoints. Do you guys have any checkpoints? Like what happens if you try to drive from New Mexico to Colorado or something like that right now? What if you try to drive from Denver to Boulder? I don't think you guys have checkpoints, but um, we definitely have very tight checkpoints. Hey Emma, how's it going? Um, hello from to Geek City. So, um, yeah, the checkpoints are, there's like, so we have what's called a barangay here in Manila, which is basically means neighborhood. Um, in the U.S., we don't really have, I mean, we have neighborhoods, but it's more like a county where um, here there's like different neighborhoods and they're all divvied up and have a captain. Um, so there's like a checkpoint to leave this barangay and there is another checkpoint to leave this city. And then there's like a third checkpoint just to like... It would be a nightmare if I needed to go to the airport, guys. There's no public transportation here. Taxis are not running. Grab, which is the Uber of the Philippines, is not running. Um, I would basically just walk, and I would have to go through multiple checkpoints to get to the airport from here. Um, you know, if you have a boarding pass and your flight's within the next 24 hours, no problem. You can go to the airport. But, um, yeah, I mean, if I'm not really leaving this, this small little part of town, so I'm, I'm thankful that I'm very happy 
and safe here. All right, Giselle also in Florida, like Anthony, who I think left the phone call now, but Giselle's in Florida and certain cities have closed their doors unless you're a resident or have essential business. Wow. So they like block the interstate. How do they protect people from coming in and out of the city? Like, I, I wonder how they're blocking that, but I think that's good. Like, it's very tight here. Like, when they set the lockdown, they locked it down and um, people started following instructions. So um, I think that's a good thing. So uh, let's see, Billy, one of the crazy things with crap, all of our jobs are new construction that are outside of stop. So last week, so this is Billy, one of my friends from New Mexico who has a, has a booming plumbing business. Last week, oh no, you guys had to lay off some new construction plumbers, but what are you gonna do if, if, there's, if the project stops? And the air conditioning guys are down to skeleton crew, geez. And, and the governor's making you shut this stuff down. Like it takes freaking years to build a business and then some BS like this can just, I mean, Billy, you're still kicking. I'm glad to hear that. But I know lots of other friends in Denver's, in Denver restaurants, you know, they've been working on these for years and then virus comes around, government changes some laws and boom, you still have to pay for utilities. You have to pay for your rent or your mortgage uh, for your restaurant, for example, and you have to pay for your business insurance and then you have to lay off all your staff and then you don't have any help on the business and it can get just destroyed in just a few weeks. So um, yeah, glad glad you guys are doing okay. Glad glad you're making the right choices, Billy. Who knows how long this is gonna go on. Like, you know, a lot of us business owners want to hold on to our staff, but it's not, you can't hold on to your staff if you're gonna make the business go bankrupt because then you have to, lay everyone off, including yourself and your, your longest term staff. You have to act what's in the business's best interest. Um, so I, I think that's just right, Billy. Um, let's see, Giselle back on the checkpoints in Florida. I'm in Miami Beach, haven't witnessed it, but that's what other friends have shared. There's a lot of uh, like what other people are sharing right now, right? Like, uh, I, I don't know what it's like in the US, but out here it's it's kind of difficult to get information and then also be able to trust the information because I'll hear one thing and then I'll go and it turns out that's not the case. And um, I'll have to go figure out the right way to do whatever I'm trying to do. Or like the grocery store hours, right? That's some. That's like a moving target. It's like, are they closing at 9 a.m. today or are they only open from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m.? I don't know. Swanee, what's up? Are you still DJing? I really need a G DJ right now. I was just telling everyone I'm working on a music video, but I, I got I got the lyrics. I got an acoustic version of the song, and it's great. But I need some bass. I need some I need some uh, some dubstep vibe or something. So uh, yeah, yeah. Louie, how about you? Are you in New Mexico too? A lot of New Mexico viewers. What you guys doing? How am I? How are my people doing? Are you guys eating a lot of green chili being stuck at home? I knew it. I knew you're eating too much green chili, man. That is, I'll tell you, I love it here in the Philippines. And one thing I really miss though is quality Mexican food. Um, but to replace that, there's a lot of quality Asian food. There's a lot of great Filipino dishes. Um, the Korean barbecue is a way more popular and more delicious thing out here. Um, of course, that's something that's been completely closed down because you can't go cook your meal together. Um, thank you, Emma. You stay safe, too. But Korean barbecue is uh, closed, you know. So, um, I don't know. I, I really hope that that things are going to open up soon. You know, I, I heard, like, pretty, pretty north. Um, so, Manila's made up of, like, a dozen big, like, or seven cities or something. And I'm, I'm like kind of here in the south, here's the airport, up north, I heard that there are people rioting against the government. This is like, I'm not sure, maybe uh, two and a half hours with traffic north of where I'm at. Uh, probably, probably about a 10 minute drive right now with no cars on the road. But um, anyway, people, people were rioting because they were not able to work and some people had run out of money and needed to eat. 
So um, I, there's some riots, and um, I don't know, there's some drama up there. I mean, one thing I'm I'm learning a lot about the politics being out here, guys. So um, anyone who wants to chime in who's from the Philippines or has lived here longer than me, please leave a comment because I don't I don't have all the information. I'm not even sure where to find the information. But um, anyway, yeah, some people are riding up there. There's some drama up there. So, um, you know, that's, that's too bad. I think people need to get back to work very soon. But I wanted to uh, save the discussion on why we should end the quarantine for a different night. So I think I'm going to wind this down for you guys. But, um, yeah, thank you all who watched the phone call. Um, if you would like to chat with me on another on another morning, if you're in the U.S. or another evening, if you're here in the Philippines, um, just shoot me a message. I, I'm looking to plan this out and kind of have a topic for each night. Topic tonight was what quarantine was like in the Philippines. Um, it's been going pretty well. They've been getting more strict. It's supposed to end at the end of April, just like a lot of U.S. cities. So hopefully that happens. And um, that's all I got for right now. But I'm feeling comfortable, feeling safe. I hope you guys are staying safe as well, staying healthy. So, um, yeah, and um, that's all for now, guys. I'll probably see you tomorrow morning as well. So um, have a good morning in the U.S., Philippines. Have a good night. Peace out.